Hi, this is Dr. Gary. Welcome to our weekly tune-up today. Well, this week, as I was observing people, working with people, and talked to many of you out there, I discovered that a lot of times, even though you hear the things I talk about over and over again, it's really easy when we get into a place called downtime to just kind of let it all go. And you go back to those language patterns and internal thoughts that are really toxic. You know, when we grow up and when we continue to become a little older, what we think is a little more mature, and also become a little kind of self-righteous, if I could use that word, about our own behaviors, thinking we kind of got a handle on our stuff, that is the highest form of denial and self-destruction there is. One of the things we have to worry about is believing that we've got a handle on it. Man, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been working on myself for years now. And every time I turn around and watch one of these videos or observe one of the classes that I'm teaching, I realize even I, knowing all this stuff, teaching all this stuff, do not have a handle on it. It's a constant efforting. And what I mean by that is we have to pay attention to the things we say, not for the sake of other people, for the sake of ourself. Remember what we say. Our inner conscious mind, that part of us that's way below our consciousness that stores our behaviors, stores our attitudes, literally stores our beliefs about what we think we can and cannot do, she has yes to just pretty much everything we say, whether it's good or not so good. We have to pay attention to the words we use. Those seven virus words that I talk about I've got several videos on YouTube regarding those. You can look in our archives. But I'm going to talk about that a little bit right now again because I cannot tell you how important it is to eliminate the improper use of those words out of your vocabulary. And I say improper use because there's a couple of those words that can be used properly if they're used in the right context. I would like you to practice eliminating them completely. Those words are, in case you forgot, why, try, need, but, should, don't, and hope. Now, some people like to argue with the meanings of these and what they really mean. What they're really arguing with is the intention behind them saying them. There's a lot of difference between the intention and actually using the word. These words have been proven out to be toxic in our thought process. You hear it all the time. And when you use these words, it really works against your best intentions. And let's just take the first one, for example, the word why. Many parents come to me wondering the reason their children do not respect them or listen to them. One of the major reasons is because when the child does something wrong, the parent asks them why they did it. That immediately creates a process inside of our mind that makes us look at ourselves and have to defend ourselves because our own self-esteem really requires us to hold ourselves up. So we start making excuses when we hear the word why because we feel attacked. You can change that to where your child actually thinks you think more of them about the situation than you actually do by just saying what was your strategy when you decided to rather than why did you do that. Can you hear the difference in the way that sounds? It is subtle However, it does work. And that second word, try, if I owed you $100 and told you I'll try to pay you Friday, what do you really hear? You know that, you've heard that before. You've heard other people say it. However, we still use that word. And how about that word, but? I think you're a really nice person, but, waiting for that other shoe to drop. It completely destroys your credibility and also your rapport with that person. And then there's that word, need, wow. Madison Avenue loves that word. When they put need in a commercial, it immediately makes you want to propel yourself to go buy the product because it feels like if you don't, something bad's going to happen. It puts the locust of control outside of yourself. And then should. I call it shoulding all over yourself. What's really going on with that word, it's a flip-flop in your brain. It doesn't really make any sense. The word should, when you say, I should have done something, or you should do this, it presupposes that you should have known how to do something before you actually learned how to do it. And the subconscious mind just doesn't know what to do with that, so it makes you feel like a failure. And then we have the word don't, tied up with the neurological law of negation, and that word is 
fiercely wrong used most of the way we use it. If I ask you, don't think of a banana, I can guarantee you, most of you watching, a banana popped into your head. In fact, it's pretty hard for it not to. Or don't think of a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. You probably saw a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. In fact, you could probably even find detail in that. What that word don't does, it presupposes the last part of the statement is positive and it becomes an affirmation. The conscious mind filters that from the subconsciousness so the subconscious mind doesn't even hear the first part of the statement. So the positive part of the statement goes into your inner conscious mind and now it becomes an affirmation. Think of times you wanted to do something and what you said rather than I want to do this, you said, well, I don't want to eat chocolate. I don't want to overeat. I don't want to forget my sunglasses. Oh, I don't want to lose my keys. And then what happens? And then we have the word hope. The word hope is an interesting word. It's all about intention. However, the subconscious mind doesn't understand that word. If you're a doctor and you're telling your patient, doing a treatment on your patient, and you tell the patient, I hope this works for you, what the patient hears is, oh my gosh, it may not. And that's what they're going to focus on. The word hope presupposes failure. Instead of hope, use the word trust. I trust this is going to work. It's just different. Now you can argue, well, it's not that good, Gary. It works better than the word hope. Why, try, need, but, should, don't, and hope. Those are the virus words. Every time you use one of those words, you're reprogramming yourself for trauma, failure. And the way we stop using those words is to become very, very aware, very much in the present moment very much in the now. That's where we can affect change both inside and outside of ourselves. Always remember, the words we use either decide what or what we cannot do. The way we talk to ourselves is the most important thing we can do each day. Also, if you're raising children, the way you talk to yourself is being modeled by your children. Think about that. A lot of people wonder the reason we're having difficulty with raising our kids these days to become productive human beings and become motivated. A lot of it is the language we're using with them. It destroys their self-esteem. So if you don't want to do this for yourself, now I use the word don't properly there. Did you hear what I said? If you don't want to do this for yourself, see how it just kind of slips in there? Remember, you got to pay attention to what you're saying. And the word don't can be used properly, but you got to reverse the intention on it, just like I did there. But saying, don't lose your glasses, probably it's going to be seated somewhere in your subconscious mind to allow that to happen. Let's work on that this week. No kidding. This can make a huge difference in your life. A lot of people just give this short duty and say, oh, it can't be that big a deal. Can't be that big a deal. Can't be that important, Gary. That isn't that big a deal. It's bigger than that, what's wrong with me. Most likely, it's not. It starts right there in what you tell yourself. So if there's something you want to do, say what you want rather than what you don't want. And rather than hoping things work out for you, trust they will. And then use this one word and apply this to the things you're doing in your life. Rather than you should lose weight or should make more money, say, I'm going to choose to lose more weight and become thinner. I'm going to choose to find ways to make more money. When you use the word choose, what happens is it puts the locus to control inside of yourself. And rather than try, use the word attempt. So let's work on this. And if you will, I can guarantee you by the time I talk to you next week, you are going to feel differently. And things will start turning around for you more than you probably think they will. You have a great week. Until next week, this is Dr. Gary wishing you a very virus-free, positive word kind of a week. Let's work on this. Until next time, I really appreciate your contacting me and giving me your ideas. And this was kind of a request from one of you out there to talk about this a little bit more. So here you go. Let's make it work now. Until next time, bye-bye.